Hi guys, so I recently sat and passed the Penetration Tester exam by Elon Security, also known as EGPT. So in this video, I'm going to share my thoughts on what I think about the exam, as well as give you some advice on what you could do to help prepare you for the exam if you're thinking about sitting it. So if that's something you're interested in seeing, stay tuned. Hi guys, welcome to Joshua's Tech Tips. So as I mentioned, I recently sat and passed EGPT exam, right? So um, before I get into that specifically, I want to backtrack for one second. So at the beginning of 2022 this year, I decided I wanted to take my career in a different direction. So if you follow my channel, you know that I mostly deal with network and system administration. So, however, I realized that I wanted to focus more um, in the cybersecurity aspect of things, specifically penetration testing. So to get started in this field, I wanted to get, you know, I, I started um, looking at various, various training avenues and certifications, specifically geared to someone like me, you know, who had no formal training or no, no prior knowledge. And after considering all of the different options, I decided to settle on EGPT. And I did this because mainly because of the reviews that I got, the feedback I got from people who are already in the field, right? They said that this was one of the best places to start by doing this exam, getting the certificate, uh, mainly because it offered a, a really practical experience, right? So uh, I'll get in more into the format of the exam later on in the video. But yeah, it was more, more, more practical, hands-on, um, take the penetration testing, geared towards people like myself, right? So just to give you an idea of EGPT, you know, what it consists of, right? In terms of what it is. So as the name suggests, it's a penetration testing certificate geared towards junior professionals, you know, junior people, people who are now looking to get into the field. Right, so it's not necessarily like um, OSCP or anything like that, right? But it's something geared towards if you're now looking to break in to penetration testing in particular, right? So uh, it's offered by a collaboration by INE as well as Elon Security. So uh, Elon Security, they actually take care of the administrating the um, administering of the examination itself. So when you sit the examination, you're sitting it on the Elon security platform. However, the training for the exam to actually prepare you for the exam, it's done through INE, right? So the easiest way to get started with this exam would be to get an INE subscription. They range from different prices. I believe it's like $2.99 go up, right? And that's a year, sorry, $2.99 a year go up. And if you're looking at EJPT in particular, the 299 option is perfect for you because that 299 gives you access to all of their training material, right? I believe the name of it is the Penetration Testing Student Pathway, right? It gives you access to all of that content as well as it also gives you access um, to two free vouchers, right? One of the exam vouchers would be for EJPT as well as one of the other exam vouchers would be for their cloud associate exam, right? So you get a lot for $2.99 in my opinion, you know, $2.99 for the year. You could study these two parts if you wish to do so and sit the exams, you know, exam, everything included for that price. So I actually did not go that route. I, I signed up on the INE um, like a year ago. And um, when I signed up, could be a little less than a year, but I was under the older subscription, which wasn't a paid. They had a free tier, right? So I actually got the, the training material for free. And I just paid and purchased the voucher directly from um, Elon Security to sit the exam. But moving forward, if you're interested in sitting the exam, go the route, the 299 route, it's the cheapest route. And as I said, it provides with all the course content so it teaches you everything you need to know about penetration testing and it prepares you to sit the exam. As well as as a bonus, you get the, the voucher to sit the exam and you also get that cloud training and um, voucher as well if you want to sit that, that particular exam as well. So as I mentioned, one of the main reasons that drew me towards EJPT was the practical component. 
So how the exam is based is that you actually get access to a lab environment, right? So you get a, a set of VPN keys where you have to remotely log in to INE's platform, sorry, to eLearning Security's platform to access this lab environment, right? So on the day of the exam, what do you get? You'll get the, as I mentioned, they provide you with a VPN key. So you need to use your computer, right? And your computer should have all the necessary tools uh, for penetration testing um, already configured and installed, right? You need to be using a Linux-based operating system in order to be successful, you know, because as most of us will know, most of the hacking tools or the penetration testing tools are available exclusively on Linux, right? Uh, you would want to use a distro, preferably if you're new like me, with those tools already built in. So I use Kali Linux, right? Because that has all of those tools already built in, such as Metasploit, Boop Suite, etc. All those things are pre-built into Kali. You also have other options such as Parrot OS, etc. Right? So whatever distro of Linux you feel comfortable with, you can use that on that day. So as I mentioned, they would give you VPN access. You'll get those VPN keys to log in um, to their lab environment. You'd also be provided with a letter of engagement, um, letting you what is ex letting you know what is expected of you, and you will also be prefer sorry. You would also have twenty questions that you will need to be to answer based on your enumeration and your exploitation of this network. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, it's a practical exam. So yes, there are questions involved. There are 20 questions, but how you get the answers to these questions is where the practical aspect comes in. And guys, for those of you who are familiar with um, capture the flags and CTFs, etc., this is nothing like that, right? So this is where you'll be in a, a lab environment, but it will be like a real life environment where you will need to use your skills that you would have learned in order to, to, to enumerate the network, in order to exploit the network and the various components of the network um, to get the necessary answers for these questions. So there are 20 questions and you need at least to get 15 of those 20 questions correct to pass. Also, you have 72 hours to complete the exam. So in my opinion, 72 hours is quite adequate enough time to complete the exam. And I think it's good, you know, that they give you that much time because if you're new like me, you know, having your first penetration testing exam could be quite nerve wracking. You know, so the fact that they give you that 72 hours to complete the exam, in my opinion, I think that's that was a pretty good factor. You know, for me, it kind of took some of the pressure off of the actual exam itself. But yes, yeah, 72 hours, that's the maximum time frame. But guys, I believe, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily need that, that 72 hour time frame. You'd get it done much sooner. So what I did to prepare for this exam, is that one, I did the uh, um, provided training on the INE site, right? The penetration testing students um, pathway. I did that training and I actually did it. I think some parts I did more than once just to really cement the knowledge that I, I learned in that pathway. And I, I would say that should be your main resource for this exam because it's a collaboration and they kind of know what they're going to, uh, expect of you in the exam, they teach you that knowledge. So I would recommend to you, you know, be sure to dig in and, you know, do it and, you know, repeat it a couple times if you need to, but really familiarize yourself with the content in the, um, the, the, the provided training that INE gives you to prepare for this exam. Aside from that, what I also did, I, I also use Triacme. A lot of you may be familiar with that site as well. Triacme also has a junior penetration testing pathway as well there. So I actually did that as well. So when I was finished with the, the provided training by INE, I went over to Triacme and I did their pathway as well. Their pathway is not that long as the one from INE, right? But I did it as well to kind of reinforce some of the concepts that I already learned about. And I think that really helped me as well. 
So those were my two main sources of learning for the exam and preparing me. Another thing that I did, which was equally important, was I did a lot of labs, right? So my preferred platform was Trihackney again, because I think it kind of holds your hand and it directs you. If you're not familiar, you know, like myself, a newbie, you know, it kind of holds your hand along the way of getting you familiar with some of these concepts. And even while you're in the lab, it kind of gives you hints and stuff like that if you're stuck. So I did a lot of labs, like coming down maybe to the last month, I did a lot of labs on Trihackney. And this, I believe, was equally important because it really gave me that hands-on knowledge, you know, being able to log into their, their VMs and being able to use those tools like Metasploit, Boot Suite, Nmap, you know, um, all these different tools, you know. So I would say... Um, do some form of labbing beside uh, the, the, the courses that are given to you in i &E, or if you want to you try to track me one as well, do some additional labbing. I think some of the rooms that I did was like Eternal Blue and um, Ice and some of those other rooms, those were pretty beneficial in preparing for the exam. So on the day of the exam, I was actually off the rocky start. So when I, I logged in, I downloaded the... Um, the letter of engagement, I read it through. I started the exam. However, for some reason, I was not getting access to the, the lab environment. For whatever reason, I just keep, I kept on getting an error message saying that um, the resources was not allocated for my lab, etc. And I was just panicking, you know. I reached out to um, Elon Security. I sent them an email. I sent a support an email. I began looking on forums and the counter had already begun counting out. It was like 15 minutes, 30 minutes, and somewhere around the 40 minutes mark, I actually was able to access the lab. I just saw, you know, after continuously reattempting it, it, it went through and I was able to access the lab, right? After accessing it, it wasn't, you know, it was pretty much stable. I think I had like two occasions where the VPN timed out. But other than that, it was pretty stable. You know, it was not nothing too distracting or any, um, any severe outages or anything like that, right? So on the first day in particular, I answered like about 10 questions, right? And um, then I got stuck. <laughs> so uh, I was just scratching my head, you know, I was getting a bit frustrated too because, um, you know, it was like about four or five in the evening. I had started, it's like six in the morning. Right. So and I, I know watching some of the YouTube videos and some of the reviews, some guys actually completed this like within four hours, five hours. Right. But, um, you know, it was, I started to get a bit frustrated when I was stuck, like on I did like 10 questions and I couldn't figure out, you know, the rest. And you know what I did? It was my grandmother's birthday that day and they invited us to a birthday party. And you know, I, I just took a break. I, I decided to take a step back. I went to my grandmother's birthday party. We had a good time. I came home, I relaxed with my family and I didn't, I didn't touch the exam for the remainder of that night or evening. And I got a good rest. Most importantly, I got a good night rest that, that night. I got more than eight hours, I believe, right? And the next morning now, I started again. I started afresh again. And what I did, I kind of went back to the drawing board and the day prior, I did a lot of enumeration, right? So I think I was pretty much set, um, you know, on enumeration. But what I did, I decided, I said, hey, here, here's what, let me start afresh. I started just doing more enumeration, enumerating the network, checking. They, are, they also give you a pickup file where, where you have to use Wireshark to open up and analyze the data. I did that and stuff. And you know what? I actually came across something very critical. Um, which I missed the day prior. So if that's something I learned and I could suggest to you guys, make sure and do proper enumeration. That I believe is like 80% of the work right there, doing that enumeration. And when I did that enumeration, that, that additional enumeration, I, I found what I was looking for. I, I basically was able to complete the exam and I think like within, um, by lunchtime. So it took me like a day and a half to actually complete the exam. And when I finished the exam and I clicked on that submit button, that was like one of the greatest feelings in the world. 
you know, that was one of the greatest feelings in the world to see congratulations, you have passed and, you know, you're now EJPT certified and stuff like that. You know, I just felt like a big weight just came off of my shoulder, right? So, I, I, you know, so that was it. You know, I took a day and a half and I was successful in completing my EJPT exam. So in closing, I just want to give you some quick tips to help you prepare for the exam if you're looking to set this exam. One, do the, the official training provided by INE. Yes, you could purchase the exam voucher alone, um, but I do think it's cost effective, you know, because I think it's like $200 for the voucher alone if you go through eLearn Security. However, if you go through INE $299, you get the voucher, you get additional voucher, plus you get the training, the official training. So I advise you do the official training, right? That's going to help you a lot in terms of preparing as probably one of your best resources. Two, lab. You want to do proper labbing. You know, um, you want to play around with those tools. Uh, Metasploit, as I mentioned, Burp Suite, Hydra, Nmap, um, John the Ripper, all these tools. Make sure you, you, you practice them and you lab sufficient, do sufficient labbing. Try Hack Me worked for me. You know, that was fantastic for me. There are other, other platforms there as well, such as Hack the Box and stuff, but Try Hack Me worked for me and I would highly recommend them if you don't already have a platform to do your labs. Third, note keeping. On that day, you will have a lot of information thrown at you, especially when you're enumerating. Do proper note keeping. And, you know, um, I used a mixture of green shot and keep note. However, there's Cherry Tree and there's a bunch of different things that you could use. I also use micro, Microsoft Visio, right? I use this to map out my network diagram and stuff like that and visualize it. Those are the tools I use, you know, whatever tools are convenient for you or you have access to, you know, feel free to use it, but make sure and um, keep notes. You need to keep those notes, you know. There's no way I see you could successfully pass this exam, especially if you're new, with all proper note keeping. And last but not least, enumerate, enumerate, enumerate. Time and time again, I would hear the experts in the industry, you know, mention that, you know, proper enumeration. That's when you, that's the key. And I could definitely tell you, if I didn't take a step back, go back to the drawing board and do more enumeration on the second day of the, my exam, I could have potentially failed, right? Because I was stuck and I, I didn't know what to do. So enumerate, enumerate, enumerate. That's probably like 80% of it right there in my opinion. All right guys, so that brings me to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're thinking about um, signing up or doing the EJPT exam, let me know if this video was useful to you. Also, if you're into networking, system administration, technology, or cybersecurity, be sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell to be notified once a new video is released. Thanks again for viewing. See you soon.